So, OMG, the ink coupon magically reappeared. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we made our way to the Boggly Woods, and we saw that in another dimension, a person lost. <laughs> so, we need to go ahead and save them, probably. I really had to in this direction. We'll see for this place in no time. Also, I can't believe I just spoiled what they lost, so I'm gonna have to bleep it out, but it's gonna sound like I said something dirty. But no, it was just. Preventing spoilers, because I don't even know how to let's play, apparently. Hit that thing! Yeah, you thought I didn't see you down there, singing cleft. Oh, but we got a new enemy here to show off. In wow, that was useless. We got a new enemy to show off, so we're gonna go ahead and switch to Goombella. And this would look familiar to people from the first Paper Mario game, but it's a bit different this time around. I did not mean to jump on you! And wow, because Goombella was powered up, she killed it in one hit. Cool. So she does four damage now with her attack. She's more powerful than Mario, so she's very, very useful to have in battle, because... No, they did have a upgraded damage in the first Paper Mario game, but like, I don't know, she's just a lot more useful than Goombario. There's just a lot more scenarios in which she would be uh, the useful useful one to have. Uh, I guess I'll just appeal to the audience. I'm Goombella, I'm the best character. And of course I couldn't do that. Could I, I uh, can't do anything, I just have to wait. Defend, appeal, whatever. God stinking darn it. Please do this. Correctly. Jesus, I need to stinking. No, I'm not using the power smash. I refuse. I don't care if I waste all my stinking HP. There you go. King of super stinking guards doesn't need any stinking whatever. Ugh. Unfortunately, we couldn't show off that enemy. We'll do so later at a later point. Right now, switch back to Coops. Unless we find the enemy like right sink in here. I believe he does show up right around. Yeah, he does. So, switch back to Goombella. It's just that I need to be careful about which party members I have out at uh, certain points in time because um, I need to make sure my voice actors have been given the proper lines. Because if I have like uh, Goombella out at a point where I give in Coops lines to speak in a certain area, then it's going to be a bit awkward. So, I try to keep it so the party members stay. The newest party member stays out with us at all times, basically. That's how I'm going to be doing it. So, hopefully. Every character gets ample screen time. So just gonna jump on this guy again, since there's two of them. I don't have to worry about getting rid of one of them right off the bat. And Gubella tattled this one. That's a dark puff. It's basically a tiny mean thundercloud. Max HP is three, attack is two, and defense is zero. Sometimes it'll change itself with electricity, or charge itself with electricity. Don't touch it when it does. Youch. You know what I mean, right? Bzzz. Shocking! After it charges itself, it totally, it'll totally zap you with lightning. It beat it as fast as you can. A pretty threatening enemy if you keep it on the screen for too long. So hopefully, okay, we're already off to a bad start. Uh, since you have two HP now, I guess I could find a uh, use in using the power smash. I could find uh, it being worthwhile. Goombella, you can't do diddly squat. Uh, Koops could hit it when it's electrified though, which is pretty nice. And you can also use the hammer. Uh, whatever. Gonna jump on him now. He only has 3 HP, so it's just like a spinia. And thankfully, even though he's floating in the air, he's floating low enough to where we could hit him with a ground attack. And we're good! Now we're just gonna get all that stuff. Oh, we got a heart. How nice. And wow, that coin's bouncing around and stuff. Uh, nothing else we could really do here. Just a bunch of dead ends everywhere I go. Just like my life and my hope for the future. <laughs> wow, that was really gruesome. Just go over here, climb up these invisible stairs, and go into the background, of course. Looks very, very cool. But at the end of this pathway, we find a switch. Uh, there's a euphemism in here somewhere, but that's another Let's Player shindig, so I'll leave it to them. And I'll just grab this crystal star, not crystal star, a star piece, excuse me. It'd be great if we could just build crystal stars with all the star pieces we're getting, but unfortunately it's not that easy. And up here, though, we see that there is a shine sprite off in the distance. Use Koops to reach it. And we got another one. Very, very nice. Just fly over here now. And eventually, we land. Another red block, which means we got a badge. It is... Ooh, the Quake Hammer badge. One of my favorites. Slightly damage all ground enemies. I'm actually going to equip that one right now. Because I do not need the... Oh, I know we have power bounce equipped, but it's not really useful right now, so... So what the Quake Hammer badge does is it does damage to all the enemies on the ground, even without hitting them. So it's going to be very, very useful in that sense. As for our other BP, 
thought over a bit and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and re-equip the multi-bounce badge even though I don't really use it. It couldn't hurt to just have it equipped. So now that's taken care of and you fell asleep so we're just gonna keep on going. Hit that, hit that, nothing for us, let's go. I believe there's just a starfish somewhere around here. Hello! So I just need to be absolutely sure that we uh, keep on hitting those trees. As you can see right here, the rough puffs could actually- not rough puffs, the dark puffs. They could change their uh, altitude, so sometimes you get him with hammer attacks, but sometimes you can't. Just keep that in mind, I guess. Hooray! The curse is happening again! Not the curse, it's the spell! It's a nice one! A friendly curse! Uh, not super useful this time around, but free star points is free star points. Get that heart, and keep on going. There's that star piece I was looking for, okay. I don't think we need to be hitting any more trees for the rest of the game, I think, I don't know. It'd be really weird if I actually remember just there aren't any more after that. Look there in the distance, that's what I was telling you about, there is please. Very seem weird if that was the case there weren't any more star pieces and trees for the rest of the game. I guess I'll try and keep track of that. Uh, if we go over here though, uh, is this even a, oh no, it's a vault room. Electrifies you to damage uh, direct attackers, so it basically gives us the dark puff ability in an item. But I don't really use it, so eh, it might be good for cooking, so I'll hold on to it. That's the thing, I want to hold on to these items for cooking purposes, because otherwise I'll have to buy them later. Uh, I don't think the power block could be... Actually, no, the power block can be turned into a food item, can't it? I, like, in, like, slight flashbacks of some kind of... Against better judgment, I'll throw out a mushroom. Uh, actually, could we use that mushroom right now? Uh, 12, yeah, we could definitely use that mushroom. What the heck am I doing? Uh, get that mushroom back, thank you. Uh, what we're gonna do is just throw it up in the sky, use a mushroom in our inventory. Even though there's like a heal block right sitting in there, just cost seven coins. Now nah, I'm being efficient with my items. That's a smarter idea to do. Sort of. Kind of. Just trying to make myself feel better about my life choices that I know aren't doing any good. But if we head back here into this area that we saw before, we get enter the house of Madame Flurry. Uh, excuse me. Uh, maybe she's in here. I wonder if she went for a walk in the woods. Madame Flurry? Hello? If you're here, say something. Question. You mustn't come in here. Uh, Madam Flurry, are you there? Is that you? What are you doing? Oh, wait a moment. Those darling, squishy little footprints. Is that you, Punio? It's been an age since I last saw you. You poor dear. Is there something you need? Uh, well, the thing is, we have a problem that only you can help us with, ma'am. I read she's entry hall is blocked. There's that stupid door we can't seem to open. My three friends are inside, so there's a pickle in and, and Mario needs those crystal stars. It's a train wreck, really. If you can't find a secret entrance for us, we're done! Oh, is that all, dearie? You came all the way here just for that? My adorable little puny. You know that I would do anything in my power to help you. However, lamentably, I'm in a bit of a bind myself. I just cannot come out. Gee, is something wrong? It's somewhat embarrassing, but I never go out without my favorite necklace. I just can't find the blessed thing. I suspect I dropped it on my daily constitutional. I'd be simply scandalized if anyone saw me without it. So I shan't be going out. I absolutely must have that necklace to highlight my beauty. And that's that. Gee whiz, that must be some nice necklace, huh? Hang on. You know what? It's weird. I'm sure I just heard someone talking about a necklace. What's that? Do speak up. You, whoever just spoke, do you have some clue as to my necklace's whereabouts? If you do, you must help me. Please, be a dear. Find it and bring it back to me. If you could, then I'd be delighted to help my squishy little friend Punio. I'm sure Mario can find your necklace where it is. He's super. You can do it, right, Mario? Nah. Huh? Did you say nah? Uh, what's wrong with you? Let's go find your necklace. Never actually said nah before. I'm sorry to trouble you so. 
Okay, we gotta go get her necklace. For whatever reason, she'll be scandalized if she is seen without it. Even though uh, she said that she came to these woods so she could be alone and stuff. So who would be out here looking for her? Beldum, I told you, blaming me for losing the sketch. And you had it. Silence, you twit. Now's not the time to get hung on, up on stupid details. We must study this sketch. Oh! Who? Huh? Look at this photograph. Wow, this Mario guy looks so manly. Check out that bushy mustache. How handsome. You know something, though, my lovelies? I swear I've seen this gentleman before. Ah! He's Mr. Mustache! Yow! Whee! Ah, I don't believe this. Vivan, this is without a doubt all your fault. I'll be dealing out some strict punishment later, my dearie. Oh, yes, I promise you that. What? That's not fair! You're the one who had the... Silence, you squirrel brain! Don't you cop that insolent attitude with me! Ugh! This is not fair! And about that necklace, I was thinking of returning it to you, but no more! Aww... And since you caused this problem, you have to figure out how to find this Mario chump! Oh! Ho! Huh. So we know what we need to do. We need to go all the way back to the beginning so we could go fight them for the necklace. Get the crown, save the town, Mr. Krabs, and all that jazz. But maybe us returning there will help Beldum become a, get in a better mood so that she isn't so mean to Vivan anymore. It's for the sake of helping Vivan, not for the sake of helping out Flurry and her stinking necklace. I don't care less about that. I want to be there for my dear precious Vivan, so wait for me, my love! I'm coming for you! I'm really dumb. I should really stop that whole lo in love with every video game character I ever see shtick. Hello! Well, if it isn't Mario! Shiny mustache or no, you can't be too bright if you came here looking for us! Mwee! And you know why? Cause we were waiting for you! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I remember. They're the ones with- Hey! Wait a second. What do you mean you've been waiting here for Mario? That sounds... suspicious! Mwee! I have no quarrel with you, but I simply can't allow you to hunt for the crystal stars. And so, I'll be taking that little map of yours just as soon as I deal with you. Whoa, whoa, scary lady. How do you know about the map and the crystals? Have you talked to Princess Peach or something? Uh, hey, now that I think about it, who are you anyway? Whee! Those who seek names are often disappointed, but if you insist, we'll tell you. We are... Who? Who? Shadow Beauties! The three shadow beauties? Vivan, you nincompoop! What are you babbling about? It's Shadow Sirens! I don't see three beauties. I see two, but then there's you and your plug ugly! Alright, sis, I'm sorry. It's just, you always call us lovelies and... It's just a figure of speech. Oh, you got some fierce punishment coming your way! Oh, gee whiz. I hate being punished. That's for later, though. First, we have to deal with this Mario and his friends. Let's do it, my lovelies! Or rather, my lovely and ugly Marilyn Vivan! The might of the three Shadow Sirens will be more than enough for the day. Y yes sir. No. <laughs> oh, I hate seeing Vivan being abused like that. Alright, whatever. We are here! It's most unlucky that our sights are set on you. Well, unlucky for you, of course. Marilyn, Vivan, let's show them precisely what we can do. Oh. Y yes, sis. And unfortunately, we have to fight them. Can't flee this fight. This is a mini boss fight against the Shadow Sirens. So, what are we going to be doing here? Unfortunately, we got to go ahead and tattle all three of them because that's what I'm doing here. So, stick and Bella and have her start tattling. We'll start with Vivan because she's the best, so we're going to have her be first. That's Vivan. She's the youngest of the three Shadow Sirens. Max HP is 10, attack is 1, defense is 0. She doesn't seem all that noteworthy. What do you mean she doesn't seem all that noteworthy? She's the greatest stinking character in the entire stinking game. Uh, she is kind of cute, I guess. She might even be cuter than I am. I guess. Uh, what am I thinking? Oh, uh, you're thinking that Vivan's the best character in the entire game? Ouch. <laughs> so, they go ahead and do that uh, delayed attack. It can actually be kind of difficult to dodge just because the timing's a bit wonky. And Marilyn, as you can see, does more damage than Vivan. Beldum, uh, 
Jeez, I can't uh, guard against any of them. Very weird timing, I know, but whatever. We're gonna have. A, we're actually gonna go and attack. Oh, I should have had multi bounce or power bounce for this. That would've been super good. Uh, I'm gonna do a uh, jump on Marilyn because she is the most threatening one of the bunch. She has the most HP and the most offense on her side. They also all have different elemental attacks. Byvan has fire, Marilyn has lightning, and Beldum has ice. So whichever one is more threatening to you, uh, go ahead and uh, take care of that one first. I'm gonna go ahead and tell on Marilyn next. That's Marilyn. She's a Shadow Siren, Beldum's younger sister. Max HP is 12, attack is 2, and defense is 0. She charges up her, her attacks occasionally. Says she's uh, says here she's the toughest of the sisters, so it might be best to defeat her first, huh? Other than that, she doesn't have any particularly outstanding characteristics. Now, now that I just thought about it, the Tatalog apparently has all of the entries in it already. It's just a matter of Gumbella deciding to look them up, so... Hello! Plus 2 attack power, that's not good. Uh, oh jeez, tiny attack power is now dropped. Ugh. Uh, I don't think Mario can even do anything. I guess we could use a uh, item if we wanted to, but the question is, do I want to? This would actually be a good time to use uh, Earth Tremor because uh, that's fixed damage. It's not based on Mario's health as far, or uh, status, as far as I'm aware. Earth Tremor! Let's see if I could do this perfectly. Sorry, I'm always super quiet during this part. I just always want to concentrate, except for this point right now when I'm talking over it. Now I'm just talking about how I'm talking, so it's not really all that interesting commentary. So it would be better if I just had no commentary at all because it would be less annoying and less uh, uh, detrimental to my performance right now. There we go. Boing, good boing. And what's really funny is that they're actually tethered to the ground, so they just get stretched out, which looks really funny. Alright, 666. Don't look too far into that. Uh, tattle on Beldum now. Oh, we saved the worst for last. That's Beldum. She's the oldest sister, the leader of the Shadow Sirens. Max HP is 9, attack is 1, defense is 0, but her blizzard attack has an attack of 2. She can make her partners big and make us tiny, and attacks with weird magic. The worst thing about her is that the sinister snicker. She sounds so totally evil. I mean, she's just the sort of person you want to avoid, like the plague, you know? Yeah, especially since she's mean to vibe and all that jazz. Ah, you're tougher than I thought, Mr. Mustache. I guess it's time to stop toying with you, hmm? Hit it, Marilyn, now! Now! What are you doing, Vivan, you twit? I'll never forgive you if you lose. Sorry, sis. Oh geez, so that's her fire attack. Oh, uh, that's the lightning attack, and that is the ice attack. Jeez, I can't guard against any of them. My god, I'm in danger. Uh, if we had another Earth Tremor, we could go ahead and finish them all off right now, but I don't, so instead... Oh, uh, what do I have that I could do? Uh, do I want to heal or do I want to switch to Coops is the question. Um... I'm going to... Just wondering, like, Koops' damage is going to not... I can't never remember if Power Shell is powered up or it just hits all enemies, so in that case... Oh, I get a flower. How nice. Thank you, friend. Even though it doesn't help me right now. I'll use a Shroom of some kind. The Mushroom. And then I'll switch over to Koops, just so we could get his Power Shell in on this fight, because it would be very useful. Uh, if we can stop being tiny anytime soon, that'd be nice. Goombella, you're going to switch over to... Uh, Koops, the poops. Ouchie, wouchie, ouchie, wouchie, fruit. Two damage, and... God darn it, I wish I could get a super guard in, but the boss fights are always so difficult to do that. Uh, this would be a good opportunity to use our Quake Hammer, though, so we could hit all the enemies at once. A bit of a delayed, uh, stylish command, but that's how it works. And up next, we're gonna defeat them all at once with the Power Shell. Hack indeed. 30 star points. Very, very nice. Maybe we were just a touch overconfident. Marilyn, Viva, and you lumps, we would have won if you two pulled your weight. Both of you, prepare for a world class punishment session when we get home. <sighs> yes, sis. Oh, mamma mia. We got ourselves the necklace, Flurry's favorite necklace. That's Flurry's necklace, yes, that's such a terror. Oh boy, backtracking once again. Apologies, like, one of the things that people complain about with Paper Mario a Thousand Doors is that there's a lot of backtracking. I really like the areas, it's just that there's a lot of moments where you're just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But we're still seeing new things at least, so at least there's new things to do. It's not too terrible, but yeah, I will agree that sometimes the backtracking can be a bit much. 
But yeah, I'll meet you guys back over at Madame Fleury's place where we could go ahead and return her necklace to her. Back inside Fleury's place. We just give the necklace to the door. Oh, you delightful fellow! You found my necklace! I'm beside myself, truly. But you mustn't see me. Please, leave the necklace by the door and wait a moment. Oh yeah. We'd still be able to see her since everyone's two-dimensional and she had to open the door entirely to reach out to get the necklace. Oh, splendid, splendid! My oh-so-ravishing necklace! I'm awash in joy! Uh... Hello? Oh, that's why she needed the necklace, because otherwise this game would be sued for having nudity. Now it's perfectly okay. Oh, oh, my word. Mario, isn't it? Are you my heroic little necklace hunter? Well, my, my, my. Aren't you a fine specimen of man? Yes, indeed. Ooh, me? I simply must thank you for your graciousness. But how to do it? Hmm... Perhaps if I grabbed you and gave you a little sugar? Oh, no, 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 thank you. Here I come, handsome. Time to give you a proper thank you. Pucker up. Mamma mia, she's a kissing my shoe. I don't really understand it, but I'm going to go faint now. Mamma mia, put some clothes on. Oh, Mario, you are just the cutest little thing I've ever laid eyes on. Oh, no, no. Yes, you are. And that's that. So, tell me, are you looking for the crystal stars? The very same crystal stars spoken of by all the lowlifes in Rogueport? Mmm, a danger-filled search for beautiful jewels? How absolutely marvelous! And here I was thinking about how frightfully bored I was. It's time for change. And besides, I do declare that plus mustache of yours has completely swooned me. A man as manly as you must attract all sorts of trouble, and I want to keep you safe. So, I dare say I'll be joining you on this little adventure. I assume that's fine, Mario. Flurry joined your party! Yeah, the party members could be a bit varied sometimes, not all just clones of the previous party members. Flurry is quite the character, to say the least. Flurry's abilities, a primer. Press X and Flurry will exhale strong gusts of wind that can blow things away. If she blows in the direction of an enemy, she can make its head spin for a bit. Hold down X to make Flurry exhale continuously. This writes itself. I'm pretty sure you don't need me to say anything because anything I could say has probably been said a million times before by other Let's Players that are much less mature than me. So I'm just going to be the bigger man and the more mature individual and not even go there. She can also do a body slam in battle, squashing enemies with her stage presence. She can also aid Mario by using her Gale Force attack to blow enemies away. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, it's always a great time when Flory joins the party. This is wonderful. It's so nice to really like you, Mario. Really, let's go. And even more importantly, Flory's chosen to join us. Let's go to the main tree. Flurry is now in our party. She has 15 HP right off the bat, which is very nice. But yeah, she is a very interesting party member. And real quick before we end the episode, I just want to like sort of acknowledge the fact that she's been such... She's been the center of so many jokes over the years of like anyone who sees this game. Like, I'm sure she's just so weird to see first off. The fact that a character like this could even exist in a Mario game is insane. I doubt she would be able to exist nowadays. But it's just so weird and like I enjoy her existence in it because she makes the Mario universe a lot more vast. It's not all peachy keen and sunshiny and like so clean and all that jazz. We got like a very different type of character who has like a very different personality that you'd think Nintendo would be too afraid to express in any of their characters. But I really like her and I like uh, her existence in the universe. But I kind of don't like that she's just the center of so many jokes just because of her appearance and everything like that. And I was sort of doing the same thing like uh, with Vivan, how she is one of my favorite video game characters, but I'm just stuck in that notion where like, oh, she's someone I love. And like when I first met her, I was really like in love with her. She was one of my favorite video game characters. And uh, for whatever reason, yeah, it's not, some people are into the Samus Aaron or the Tomb Raider person whose name I can't even remember the name of, but no, I get the hots for purple blobs with wizard hats for some reason, but whatever. But that's just the thing. Like I remember back in the old LPing days, how I was always just, 
obsessing over my favorite video game characters like whenever Erica came on screen or Maya or Emma or whatever. I would just go head over heels for them and I'd go on full Brock impersonation and being in love with them and all that jazz. But over the years, I just find myself being uncomfortable with that. Even if I do find a character attractive, either for their looks or their personality, like I just don't like acting like that anymore. It's not appropriate. So I guess that's good to see that I've grown in a way that I become a decent human being. Even if it's just a video game character, it's still just not fun to talk like that. So uh, maybe I could become better in articulating how I uh, care about a character without just sounding like a total pig. But granted, like when watching shows like Pokemon seem Brock obsess over every single woman, I never really thought of it as being disrespectful to women. I thought they were just like making fun of Brock, how he was so stupid, how he was so stinking obnoxious, and how he always got his comeuppance immediately afterwards, so they never let him get away with that behavior. So I think they handled it in a decent way, at least if they wanted to portray that character in that way, but... Still, I know it's not the most appropriate thing and it's not enjoyable to listen to over and over and over again with every single guy who interacts with any single woman over the years. It could be kind of old and inappropriate and just very tiresome to listen to. So I'm going to try and be a better person and just a better commentator in general by just not having those jokes pop up too much in this LP or in any LP in the future. So apologies if previous LPs were super cringeworthy because of that, but... Hopefully I can become a better person in the near future. Next time on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we are headed to the Great Tree with Madame Flurry. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. Punio never sleeps!